Hey everybody, Michael Lombardo here from Life Poured Out International. Welcome to Awaken Live. And so I'm excited uh, for my guest here today on the broadcast. For those of you who are watching in the past couple of weeks, we've had some incredible guests. Robert Hotchkin was on with me last week. Uh, Patricia King came on with me. We had a beautiful time together talking about the glory of God, how to operate from that realm. And so today I've got a great guest, actually a friend of mine, Sean Tabbitt, connected me with him. I just want to say hi to everybody who is tuning in right now. In the meantime, I am just going to share this while I wait for some of you guys to join on. I am going to share this on my other Facebook pages for those who have not quite come over to my ministry page here. So we have an Awaken Live group where you get notifications of our live show in your notification section on Facebook. You can join in live, and so now that is available on the Facebook group, Awaken Live with Michael Lombardo. And then I'm going to share it on my personal page. And I started Awaken Live, it was on my personal page, and then we topped out on 5,000 friends, so I didn't want to limit that, and so we made this page. And so I'm going to share it on my personal timeline right now, and live now. Perfect. So it's on all of those different platforms. And hey, Lorraine, hey, Becky, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know if you can see me okay, if the visual as well as the audio is okay. That'd be great. That'd be really helpful, Becky, Lorraine, those who are tuning in. Comment at the bottom. Let us know where you are watching from. It's always really great to see people from Australia, America, Canada, Africa, Asia, all over the place that are tuning in to the broadcast. That's super fun and cool. And so um, comment at the bottom. You can share this so it gets out to more people. This is a gift in the body of Christ, seeing that seer gift, seeing in the spirit, the Lord's highlighting. You know, I've had several guests in the show. We talk about this topic. Jennifer LeClaire, Jamie Galloway, Anna Warner has come on. We've touched on this subject. The Lord is activating the bride in this gift right now. Um, he has been for years, but the Lord really has been, a lot of messages have been going forth, helping believers navigate these waters. And so Becky, Terry, thank you. You can see me fine. Thank you so much. Terry Smith, thank you for joining from Canada. Bless you. Canada, just comment at the bottom. Let us know where you're watching from. Give people a few minutes to tune in. But for those of you who are unaware, you can go to our website, lifeportoutintl.org. There we have archives of most of our shows, about 75% of the Awaken Live shows. We've been doing this for um, about a year and a half, a little more actually, and almost every single week we've had a guest or two on the show. We've had Brian Simmons and um, Brian the Strange, Matt Sorger. Um, close friends of mine that are missionaries and pastors, Caleb Hires, beautiful people on the show. And so the archives are on the website. Or you can go to my YouTube channel. Just look up Michael Lombardo. And um, the subscribers have been going up on there. Every single time we do a show, I put it on our YouTube channel. So there's literally hours and hours. I think there's about 80 Awaken Live shows on there now. And so each show is almost an hour long, some an hour. And so there's hours and hours of encouraging you know, teachings, testimonies, times of live prayer, activation, um, different things like that. We touch on various subjects, okay? People from different streams in the body of Christ, not just the charismatic, supernatural, but we dove into some very theological subjects. And all of the subjects are in the Word of God. I don't mean it like that in regards to the supernatural, but I mean we did dig into like free from the sinful nature. What does it look like? You know, sanctification, what does that look like? We dive into several different subjects, and so it'll be a blessing to you. But no further ado, I don't want to, some people are tuning in now. Um, I want to get my guest here on the show so we have as much time as possible. His name is Blake K. Healy, and this is his book, The Veil, An Invitation to the Unseen Realm. And um, a buddy of mine connected me with his uh, publisher over there at Charisma House. And so this book, he'll tell you a little bit more about it, but I want to tell you a little bit about him, and he'll share some more. But he's the director of Bethel Atlanta. School of Supernatural Ministry and a part of the leadership team at Bethel Atlanta Church. He travels the churches and conferences around the country to share his experiences of seeing in the Spirit and teaching others about this gift. And so he has a he has a wife and he also has four children. And so I want to welcome Blake to the show. Welcome, Blake. Thanks for uh, joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. Cool. It's awesome. And so for those, man, there's some people who are tuning in right now. They might not be too familiar with you or your heart. I know I was reading through your book, The Veil, and you talk a lot about you were young and you were seeing in the spirit. And so give us a little bit of a framework for who you are, what you're all about, and kind of, I know you go to different conferences and churches as well as you're part of Bethel in Atlanta. And so you're doing a lot of equipping and teaching 
on this subject of seeing in the spirit. And so where did this journey begin with you, man? And, and give us a little bit of framework for that. Yeah, I'll try to give a somewhat abbreviated version. I've um I've been seeing the spirit since I was a little kid. For in fact, my um my first memories are seeing an angel. Um, I remember sitting in the back of my parents' car, just um, my mom was at the drive-through window at the bank, and she was uh, just chatting with the teller, and we were listening to some worship music. And I just remember seeing about a half dozen of these baseball-sized lights just uh, drifting back and forth in time with the with the worship music. And, you know, ever since I was little, I'd be seeing these things and I didn't really have a context uh, for them. And in fact, you know, when I was younger, there was almost this mutual ignorance that went on between me and my parents where, um, you know, I'd be seeing stuff in the spirit and I'd point it out. And my parents, you know, just thought I had an active imagination. And, you know, I thought they were just as uninterested as the ladies dressed in gold that were dancing at church as they were in the, you know, fire trucks and mailboxes and airplanes and other things that, you know, me as a little kid found so interesting. Sure. So, um, so for the again to kind of get through it quickly, you know, for the longest time, um, we weren't we, you know, my parents didn't know what was going on. They, I was raised in the church. They got saved right before I was born, but they didn't. Um, they didn't, weren't really going to churches that had a context for this sort of thing. And so, I, you know, didn't really understand what was going on until I was twelve years old. We started going to a church that really actively trained people in the gifts of the spirit. And that was the first time I really had the courage to fully share with my parents what I was seeing, what was going on. Because other before that, I as I was realizing I was seeing something that other people weren't, I'd be kind of vague about it, you know. Um, but the uh, you know the biggest thing for me is that you know from I, I learned that I had a gift at twelve, and as I was you know learning how to use it from kind of twelve to twenty two years old. The biggest thing that I discovered in my process of learning was just how much all the things that I saw, all the angels that I saw, the way that even the way that the presence of God responded to demonic stuff and things like that, how much all of that reflected how good God is and how how much he has invited us into as his children. And so that really, to me, was the the the, the impetus, the thing that got me going to wanting to share this with other people and you know, because I, the second I realized that what I had was a gift, I was immediately convinced that it was meant to be available for any Christian. And so because of that, I, you know, I just love traveling and equipping people in this gift and in just learning more about who that is. That's awesome, man. And it's funny, you know, you were telling your parents, you know, they really didn't have a grid for it. What would you say to parents that have, because my daughter, she, she hears from the Lord. She's prophetic. She's only three years old and she says things out of her mouth. I'm like, you just heard from the Lord. You have no clue what just came out of your mouth. And I thank God that we've had a lot more training and teaching on this where we can kind of help her navigate those waters. But yeah. what would you say to parents, you know, considering you grew up and your parents didn't know how to handle it, what would you say to parents that their kids are obviously gifted? They're, they're having dreams. They're seeing in the spirit. They're saying things that are prophetic. Totally, yeah. The, the biggest thing is uh, – don't treat it too big and don't treat it too small is the way that I like to put it is, you know, there's no junior Holy Spirit. So we all have the same Holy Spirit. The kids are just as gifted as all of we are. And sometimes they're, they're confident enough and easygoing enough that they can kind of tap into it easier than some of us can sometimes. Um, but the, you know, like um, I, I didn't, didn't mention this, but it's in the book in, in a good amount of detail from kind of nine to 12 years old. I started seeing a lot of demonic things, especially at nighttime. And it would cause me a, just a whole lot of fear. And yeah. I, I was shocked that when I started sharing about this publicly, this that hundreds of people that would come to me, that would email me, that would talk to me, that had the exact same experience as a child. And you know, I felt so alone at that time, but I'm stunned at the number. Like, it's almost common, you know, just the number of people I keep hearing about this. And um, the biggest thing that I tell parents when they're dealing with this is the important thing to remember is, Ultimately, it's about them learning how to how to lean into and depend on God themselves. And just like when your te when your kid is learning how to walk, you can't you can't force them to learn how to walk. You can't you know make them learn how to walk, but you can create an environment where it's safe for them to learn how to walk. And so, especially if there's fear stuff going on, just teaching kids how to focus on the good stuff, how to focus on what God's doing, how to focus on what He's releasing. Just asking simple questions, just like you would when you're teaching them anything. Like, you know, hey, are there any angels? What are the angels doing? What do you think Jesus is doing right now? And 
just simple little questions um, and, you know, asking them during the day when they feel happy and, and it may feel a little bit safer, but then also mm -hmm. asking at nighttime as well. And um, so that's a big part. It really is, especially when they're young, young kids, the this simple and best way I've seen people grow this in their kids is just asking lots of questions. You know, what are you seeing right now? And then just kind of let them, let them sort it out, let them process it. You know, when my little girl got scared here and there, we would tell her there's nothing to fear. Jesus is here. You know, we, because we have Jesus, there's nothing to fear. And in certain situations where, you know, we just put a nightlight in her room because she wanted it. And she's like, I see a shadow. But it was just really just because the nightlight was casting a shadow on something. And she would say, no, daddy, but I'm not scared. Jesus is here. We just told her certain things. You know, we just we take time to pray over her. We take time to speak to her certain things, you know, in situations. And so I find that really important. But for me, man, just like just like you, well, you were you were a lot younger, but I, man, at 14 years old, I started dabbling in drugs, and I opened up the door um, to the demonic in my life, and I began to see demons at night, and I was paralyzed with fear, and thank God my mom was a believer. She would tell me, use the name of Jesus, use the name of Jesus, and it's funny because I believed in God in my heart, but I wasn't serving the Lord, but still, I would say the name of Jesus, and I would see the demons flee. I would see them go. And um, I gave my heart to the Lord at a young age, but I didn't really follow him until 19 years old when I had a dramatic encounter. But um, I just, you know, and I, man, I can't tell you when I got saved, I got deliverance prayer. I got all kinds of stuff because the, the warfare got worse. I was seeing demons on a higher scale, a different level. They really weren't happy with me coming to know Christ and coming into the light. But I learned how to take my authority and I learned about who I am in Christ and the authority I carry, the presence of the Lord that's in me. It was a journey, man, where I was being in the spirit, the demonic, but also the angelic. And so... I began to share this with people just like you, and yeah, people all over the body of Christ are experiencing the angelic, are experiencing visions and dreams, are seeing the demonic, or having bad dreams, or feeling, sensing something, whether they're seeing or not, they're, they, they, they sense a presence of the Lord or a presence of the demonic, and so I'm really glad that um, God's raising up people like you and many others in the body that are teaching on this subject. And let, me, let me ask you this, man, because I haven't really met a whole lot of people that when they're like two, three years old, have saw this all these different things usually it happened later on in their lives why do you think the lord opened up your eyes to this at such a young age it's i'm just i would love to hear your your thoughts on that yeah you know it's interesting i i talk about that time where i felt afraid and but before that like so nine years old and younger i would see demonic stuff and angelic stuff in about equal measure you know i'd see them about the same amount and you know, I, the demonic stuff just didn't scare me. It didn't didn't frighten me. It didn't weird me. I remember the specific time I was I was a missionary kid growing up. So we were in we were in Russia and we were driving home from a late uh, church service and it was nighttime and I was laying down in the back seat of the car, um, you know, kind of halfway getting ready to go to sleep and I remember looking out the window and just seeing this um demon outside the window and it was kind of you know banging on the window and scratching at it and it was like it kind of had these. Uh, Kind of looked like a gargoyle, almost like these kind of bat-like wings and kind of scrawny hands, and um, and I was just doing that. And I remember thinking, like, "Oh, that looks ag aggressive," but it didn't, it didn't scare me. Like there was no sense of danger or, or fear with it. And it wasn't until I later that I actually started just dealing with the, the fear side of it. And so, you know, I on one side of the coin. I've run into enough people that have that when they when they grow up in a culture like this that that they notice their kids pointing stuff out or talking about stuff that may not you know that they don't necessarily recognize the context of it and so I tend to think that most of us see in the spirit it's almost like we unlearn how how to see in the spirit I think it's something that's built in you know in the same way that I I, I teach this in the in the prophetic that that we are just fundamentally designed for communion with God. In, in the same way that we are fundamentally designed to to know what's going on in the spirit realm, we we are spirits, and so, um, so I think that it really is is just normal. Um, from from another angle, I know that this is a gift that grew really rapidly in me, and I you know I used to think when I was younger when I would see like a, you know someone who's an amazing evangelist or an amazing teacher or an amazing uh, you know had an amazing gift of healing or, or something like that, I used to think like. Oh God, just made a you know cool rock star guy. Um, but I remember one day the the Holy Spirit corrected me of like you know now I don't release a special anointing on certain people just so that they can be awesome. I, I release a special anointing on certain people to show others what's available, 
to show others what's available in a normal Christian life in connection with the Holy Spirit. And so I think that part of the part of my call and it's part of what I'm, you know, trying to trying to do is that I'm not an example of like, ooh, look at this cool thing that I have. It's no, this is just freely available to to anyone to anyone who's hungry for it. Yeah. Absolutely. And for those who are just tuning in right now, comment at the bottom. We'd love to hear from you guys. I see all your comments there. Feel free to like this. Feel free to share this on your wall. If you know somebody, you can tag them that needs to hear about this subject, that is hungry for the things of the Spirit like this. But, like, so I know you, you started getting involved with different ministries. You started to get activated in a more and more understanding and knowledge in it. How did you begin to kind of walk with the Lord? It's all about intimacy, right? And for me, as I, as I, pursued the Lord as I got with him and began to seek him and know him in a deep, intimate, personal way. I began to see visions and I began to understand these things more. And so how did this translate for you? How did it become like, okay, it's not just something I'm seeing, but now with the Lord, I'm able to use this gift for his purposes. How did that transition take place? And whatever insight you'd like to share. Yeah. So for me, for whatever reason, this was kind of a long process. I, at 12, like I mentioned, it was the first time I went to a church that was really active about training people in the gifts. And so I talked to some of the prophetic leaders there and kind of learned, oh, this is a gift. Okay, I can use this. And, you know, honestly, for the following 10 years, off and on, I would, I would go from, you know, just not talking about this at, at all because I'd be so frustrated by just my inability to, to convey exactly what I was seeing to you know, trying to push and trying to share about it and trying to get it out there and um, and for a long time it was just really really frustrating and you know some of it was just my own personality in that I would um, you know people I would you know tell someone oh while you were leading worship I saw this angel wearing a green robe and it was dancing around you and as you know they're like well why was it wearing green I don't know you know why was it dancing around me. I don't know, you know, everything I'd share, there'd be 20 or 30 questions after every single thing. I just kind of find it overwhelming. And, um, but, you know, it, it wasn't until um, as I got older and as I started just growing in connection with the Holy Spirit, I started to realize that the main thing that I would feel frustrated about is that there was something special that I felt every time that I saw an angel, every time that I saw something in the Spirit. And I didn't feel that special something come out of my mouth when I would share it with other people. And that was the part more than anything that made me just not want to talk about it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was 22 years old that I realized um, during, as I was just kind of going through some of my own process that what I was seeing, what the, the, the little element that was attracting me to every single thing that I saw was just the reflected glory of God. It was how every single thing Every single angel, every single move of his presence was a reflection and, and an expression of his love for his people. Mm. And that's what I felt, and that's what wasn't coming out of my mouth. And we kind of share this story in the book, but at, at around uh, 22 years old, uh, I got a prophetic word from someone that it was time to start sharing about what I was seeing again. Yeah. And as soon as I did, it all of a sudden it was easy to feel that same love coming out of my mouth when I was sharing with people. I would see people receive it and and experience it. And so what, what I realized now looking back was that, and it would have saved me a lot of heartache if I'd realized this, was that the my main per, the main purpose of my gift at that point was not to share it in that age of 12 to, to 22. The main purpose then was just to grow in understanding what what it, what the spirit realm looks like, what it how it works, and then what we're supposed to how we're supposed to respond to it, how we're supposed to engage with it, I got so focused on how do I use this, how do I use this, that I didn't learn about why I would use it. And once I started stepping into that journey, is when all of a sudden it became easy to, to use it for other people, easy to share it with other people. And so that was a that was a big part of it. Even as you're talking to me right now, I'm just thinking about Jesus. You know, some people are like, "How many? How come we don't have much of Jesus's, you know, story of being a child or growing up?" We've got that one story about I got to be in my, you know, my father's business in the temple where he was left behind, and then you see, you know, 30 years old, he breaks out into ministry, anointed by his father, all of this stuff. But what was he doing before that? I almost think that it was something very similar that he was seeing in the spirit. He was learning. He was learning. He had to grow in knowledge. He grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. 
he grew in knowledge. He took on that limitation. And I feel like he was just with his father, learning and growing and all of this. And then there is a time where the Lord anoints you and releases you to go out and to do the very works of God, to partner with him, to co-labor with him. But um, man, it is it is so special. I think the Lord, he's opening up the eyes of so many in the church. And I think more than anything, you know, the Bible says, pursue love and desire earnestly the spiritual gifts, especially that you might prophesy. And I know that seeing the spirit often goes together with prophecy, right? And so, but our, our number one pursuit is love. I feel like if we would just abide in the vine, if we were all about the father, if we were spending time with the son, if we learned how to cultivate an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, then it would just be all about him. And then all of this, you know, the prophetic ministry, yes, hunger for it. Yes, go after it. But it would be a beautiful byproduct of just our relationship with God. And it would be healthy because in his love, we receive wholeness and freedom from insecurity and fear and all the different things that kind of cloud that that kind of seeing gift and that prophetic gift and how it manifests. And so, you know, what have you seen in what have you seen in like equipping people? What are some blockages? What are some things that people struggle with learning how to flesh out this gift? Yeah, so I've been uh, I've been here at Bethel Atlanta for about ten years now, and a big part of that has been just equipping people in the prophetic and in seeing in the spirit. And you know the the number one thing that I would say it's kind of twofold um, is first of all is just just relentless pursuit. Like if you're hungry for something, it, just keep going, going after it. Practice, you know, practice, practice again. You know, it, and even the Bible it says, you know, eager, eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially that you might prophesy. You know, and there, there's something to pursuing something that you're hungry for. And it, you know, it's important that we're, to remember that we're not just pursuing a gift for the sake. We're pursuing it because it is a way of knowing our Father better. And and being willing, you know, it's so funny. It's it's very similar to the way that I see people getting stuck with with regards to the prophetic is we can get so scared of being wrong of making a mistake of not knowing how to do it of not doing it right and it, it's funny to me because there's literally nothing that we do as people that you don't have to learn how to do <laughs> you know that you don't have to grow in that you don't have to um you know make mistakes you know even walking even breathing you know a baby's first born it doesn't even breathe perfectly yet you know it's because you have to learn how to do it and so um it's it and you know it's funny i've had students you know will pray for impartation i've had it where people receive a gift instantly and they start singing the spirit right of the way or, or right away but the majority of people i've noticed is that it's engaging in this you know, Father, teach me how to see. Teach me how to see what you're doing. And spending time practicing in the middle of a worship service, just asking the Holy Spirit, show me what's going on right now. And it may be at first that you get it the same way that you get a prophetic word, where you see a picture in your mind's eye or um, where you just feel an impression. But I've noticed that as people steward that, even that side where they're not seeing with their eyes yet, that as they steward that, it begins to grow. And several of our students now at the school, we've had it where they steward that for a few weeks, a few months, you know, different for everyone, where all of a sudden, boom, they start seeing with their eyes. And so for me, like pursuing this and going after it, the biggest block is just being willing to try, you know, being willing to engage or even knowing how. And yeah. that's, that's one of the messages that I'm trying to get there. It's just some of the basic ways that we can know how to pursue a gift like this. You're talking about the fear of failure, like even stopping us from practicing. And you're saying everything in life, we got to learn. We got to learn. We got to practice. And reminded me of when I was reading through First John, and people have a hard time with certain sections of First John where it talks about if you practice evil, you're of the evil one. But if you practice righteousness, you're as holy as he is, as holy as the son is. You're born of God. And the Lord highlighted that word practice to me. It's like if you're practicing guitar, you're, everything in you is trying to get better. Yeah, you're, you're going to play some wrong notes. You're gonna, you have to learn how to tune it. It's going to sound bad if you don't. You know, you don't get good at guitar for a while. You take hours and hours of practicing and learning and listening before you can do it well. And so, but you're practicing to get better. You know, those people who are just practicing sin, everything in them wants to sin. That's why they're, but that word practice is so important. I think it's not just with, you know, in terms of living the spiritual life, in terms of, you know, you know, when it talks about evil and righteousness there, but the gifts, the spiritual gifts, man, if you want a guitar is a gift, singing is a gift, 
you know, uh, sports, you know, learning how to, you know, be an athlete, you know, athlete, growing as a gift. It's the same thing. If you want to use the gifts of God, operating the gifts of God, it's there's still an element of practice and, you know, trial and error, you know, getting it wrong, you know, getting it right, kind of learning in that process. And so, and I really love Bethel because they're really great at cultiv- cultivating an environment where there's freedom to kind of miss it and when, you know, to, to get it right, but also to miss it. And I think it's really important in churches. A lot of churches don't have that freedom, you know, where people, where people can practice and grow in their gifting. And that's why if you're, you know, right now, if you're watching and you're like, I'm not, I'm, I don't go to a church where the spiritual gifts are, you know, are common or where people, you know, encourage and, you know, challenge you to operate in the spiritual gifts. People think it's weird, you know, get some believers around you that are hungry for the things of God, that love the Lord, that are after his heart, that are after the gifts, whether it's a small group, maybe it's you and one other person, maybe it's you and three, five, six, seven, eight, ten people, whatever it may be, plug into a community where you could where you could do that. You could practice one another. But also on top of that, get get, you know, listen to teachings and and you'll know, get your hands on books like The Veil. And for those who are tuning in right now, we're talking about this book, The Veil. Um, I guess Blake Keeley, this is his book, um, an invitation into the unseen realm. And so um, this would be a blessing to you, kind of hearing his stories of growing in the gifting and some practical as well as scriptural, you know, understanding on this stuff. But, you know, for those who are tuning in, Blake, right now, and they're like, man, I saw some people comment at the bottom and they say, my husband has this gift. Or um, one person said, I'm new to the program and I have no clue what it's like to see in the spirit. Um, What would you say just to kind of close this out, you know, an encouragement, you know, to tell people. And then we're going to get into a time of prayer and ministry here to pray for you guys. But um, so share this at the bottom because in a few minutes or so, we're going to we're going to pray for you guys who are tuned in. But what would you say to, hey, listen, people want to grow in this. They've got some experience, little experience or, you know, whatever it may be. What would you encourage them? In? Yeah, I, you know, I'd say that, again, kind of two things with this, that if this is a gift that you're hungry to see and pursue it. You know, just like you said, read read books about it. You know, read read my book. Read read the Seer by Jim Gall. Read the School of Seers by by um oh, I'm blanking on his name right now. By, uh, yes, uh, and yeah, just just look for the School of Seers. You'll find. Uh, oh, I'm like that anyway. But read read books about it. Read books about the prophetic. Like you know, when I first got involved in the prophetic, I loved it so much. It was so life giving to me. I got every book, every tape, everything that I could find because feeding your stuff on that stuff on that stuff, you're, you're, you're getting to stand on the shoulders of others. And that's, that's the kingdom, you know, where you, we get to, where, where, where someone else gets, get, we get to experience the victory that someone else uh, fought for. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Find a group to practice, practice with, pra- practice with them, keep pursuing, keep driving, but also on the other side, just remember that the purpose of this is to build intimacy with you and your father. And when we can keep that as the very center of our focus, the, the journey doesn't seem like a waste of time. It's it, the journey itself feels valuable. And the, the last thing I'll leave you with on this subject is remember that, that God wants you to see this stuff. He's not hiding these things from you. He's hiding them for you so that you can discover them so that you can see them. I, I remember this one time I was teaching a class. It was a five-week class, and we got uh, four weeks in. There was this one guy who just had he had been hungry for this gift for years and years and years, and he was practicing all week, every week, and he was just going for it. But, man, he wasn't seeing anything. He wasn't sensing anything. He wasn't getting an impression, just just nothing. And so he was super discouraged. It's week four, only a, you know, only a couple weeks left. He's just super bummed out. And I said, you know, I just want this guy to have a win. I'm like – you know, I'm in here with a bunch of Bethel students, and we're we're you know practicing together, and uh, and I was like, hey, just just guess, just guess where you think an angel might be in this room. And I'm like, oh, there's a bunch of people in here. This there's you know, a good dozen or so angels in here. There's a good chance they might just land on one. You know, I'm like, because I'm just hoping this guy's gonna get a win. And he's just he's like, he's like, I'm just just guess, just your best impression, you know, guess. And so he just looks around and he just points at a spot near the front corner of the stage, and he's like, is there something there? And I was like, no, that's like one of the only spots that there isn't anything at all. But the second I opened my mouth to say no, an angel that was standing by the door on the on the whole other side of the room zipped over so that it was standing exactly where he was pointing. Hmm. And I literally had to stumble with my words like, no, uh, yes. <laughs> and, you know, I share with him exactly what happened. And it so encouraged him, you know, and just reminded him that, like, heaven's on your side. 
Heaven is not hiding from you. God is not hiding from you. He he is vast and he is mysterious and he is so much bigger than we are. And because of that, there is this journey into getting to know him and to getting to know who he is. But being willing to stay engaged in that journey and get, staying engaged in the trust that he is leading me to him is what keeps you going along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree 100 percent. And when God uses you and you begin to see these things, it's not supposed to, you know, knowledge puffs up. It's not supposed to make, oh, look how great I am and my gifting. It's honestly to do the opposite, to say, how amazing is my God that he would use somebody like me. When I when I see something over someone's life, I prophesy, I pray, and they're like, wow, that was so God, thank you. You don't even know. That's like, well, it's for me, it's like, God, that you would allow me to partner with you. What is man that you're mindful? Like you you love me so much that you're allowing me to see your heart and, and bless this person, encourage this person. And so it's always meant to produce dependency and gratefulness and like you said, promote relationship, you know, that you just fall more in love with him. You just realize you're so good. You're so kind. You're so loving. I'm a weak, flawed person, but in my weakness, your strength is made perfect. I'm grateful for you, you know? And so I just pray that as you grow in these gifts, that you would just stay totally away from that puffed up mentality and you would grow in your humility, realizing he loves you. That's why he's sharing his heart with you, not because of your works or anything, special about you in that sense every, every one of us is special we're children of god that he is he loves to pour out his gifts on his children and so bless you guys that are watching right now and he was talking about books his book the veil is a great resource if you want to grow in the spirit um on a warner wrote a book called the sears path sean tabbitt wrote that at the bottom that's a great resource jamie galloway wrote a book called the secrets of the seer which is a great resource james gall wrote a book called the seer Jonathan Welton wrote this, uh, The School of the Seers. And so there's great resources out there for you. I recommend that you get a copy of The Veil. It will be a blessing to you in your journey. I also have on my website, lifepouredoutintl.org, um, a five-part teaching series called Life in the Spirit. And I really go into seeing the spirit as well. And so you can go to our website. It's right there in the status section. You click on that. Go to the shop page. It's on there. Like $10 for five hours of teaching. Get the digital format. But, um, dude, so let's just – I would love for you to pray for those who are watching right now. And then after that, we could kind of tell people about your website and different things. I want them to connect with your ministry. But however you feel led in your heart, man, just pray for the people. Yeah. God, I just thank you for all these people on this on this live stream right now, Lord. And I just – um, yeah, I just, I just release a, a season of encounter with every single one of them. I just, um, I just feel that we're coming into a season where stepping into – Active, deep intimacy with the Father is just is just being released in new and powerful ways all across the earth. And I just um, I just think we're in this season of discovering of just how much Jesus won on the cross for us, and just how much how much of a right, how much of an invitation, and how much intimacy has been has been poured out upon us. And I, the biggest tragedy in my mind is that any of us, especially those who have call ourselves Christians would miss out on any drop of of that simply because we don't know how to look for it since simply because we don't know how to find it and so I just release the grace to, to connect with the father to remember that our father never leaves us to remember that he's always speaking to us I just um I just saw this picture of this uh, couple of you where like there were situations at work or in, or in family specifically those two types of things where um where there was just struggles and it would it, it just catches you like you're you're at home and it, you just keep thinking about that thing and it keeps going over in your mind and you just can't get over it you can't figure out what to do and it's just overwhelming maybe it's you're, you're upset at a person or someone did something super unjust or, or whatever else and it just keeps bugging you over and over and over and i just um i just hear the holy spirit ready to just to come in like a rushing wind into that circumstance and all you have to do is just pause and just say what do you say about this what do you say about this? And I, I just feel there's multiple of you out there that are in that kind of thing where there's just that thing or that person that just keeps popping up and stealing your peace and stealing your rest. And, um, it's, and it, but he's just right there. And the second that he, you'll know it's him because the second that he speaks, all of that torment, all of that like stress that, that goes with that, all that overwhelming feeling, will just erase and you know exactly how to respond. So yeah, I just released that in Jesus' name. There wouldn't be any 
any of those small little nibbling circumstances that steal from the peace that we're meant to live in every single day of our lives. Yeah, and you know, like when you're outside in your car, like the like the window gets all foggy, and you're not able to see. You need those wipers to clear it away. I just saw like a fog, just being completely wiped away in Jesus' name. Like there's a fog, and you're not able to see beyond the glass to see what's ahead of you. Many of you felt like I'm just foggy. There's a, there's a cloudiness. There's a heaviness. There's anxiety, stress, different things in my life, unbelief. You know, um, uh, that that's just clouding my vision. And I just pray in Jesus' name that um, the eyes of your heart will be enlightened, that you would see the beauty and the majesty of Christ, that you would know who you are, the inheritance that is available to you because of Christ and his work, and that you would just know his love in a deep and intimate way, and that would just clear the fog. All that all that nonsense, all of that that, 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 that fog from the enemy that he would try to put before you to hinder you and to, to thwart your gifting would be completely wiped away in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, we bless you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Share this with your friends. But Blake, before we get off the show today, for those who just tuned in, we're talking about The Veil. How do people get a copy of this book, The Veil, um, an invitation to the unseen realm? And how do they connect with your ministry now? Yeah, so it's, uh, the book is available on um, on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Um, we also have an audio version on audible.com if you're into that. Um, my, my website is just blakekhealy.com, and I'm putting up some um, – updates there I'm actually about to start a podcast pretty soon just talking about seeing the spirit and that'll be available on that website in the uh, in the coming weeks and so i'm really excited about that um also i have a brand new book coming out called profound good that's coming out february 5th i believe that pre-orders are available on amazon if you're interested in that and that um the veil is really about kind of my story growing up and my journey and is how i learned how to how to uh, interact and what the purpose was behind the gift of seeing the spirit uh, profound good is really about how what the gift of seeing the spirit after seeing the spirit for 30 years what that has taught me about the nature of god's goodness and so i'm really excited about that one that's coming out february 5th and uh yeah i also got some uh, events on my on my website just where i'm speaking and different places like that if you ever want to come visit us here at bethel atlanta we, we'd love to have you and i share once or twice a month around here so yeah, and you can also visit uh, BethAtlanta.com slash school if you're interested in the School of Ministry or just want to come visit and see what it see what it looks like out there. Awesome. That sounds great. And so I have your website right there, BlakeKHealy.com. It's going to be in the comment section as well, but I just want to put that on the screen. And so um, Profound Good, that's your new book. You say it's coming out in February 2019? Uh, yep, February 2019. February 2019. Well, I encourage you guys get plugged into his ministry visit Bethel Atlanta, go to their website. But thank you so much, Blake, for joining me on the show today, man. It was awesome to have you. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Oh, it was great being here. Thank you. Oh, you got it, man. So I'm just going to stay on here for a couple minutes more, but have a great day. All right. Thank you. You got it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to Awaken Live. Um, I want to show you a copy of my book, Immersed in His Glory, a supernatural guide to experiencing and abiding in God's presence. It was released with Destiny Image Publishers in January. If you want to grow in experiencing God's presence, but also just abiding there, living in that place of his presence, Jesus tore the veil that separated you from the Father so you can hear his voice, walk in deep intimacy, live in first love, and it's possible through faith in Christ. And so that book is all about that. I share a lot of my story, but I bless you guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to have William, uh, Will Hacker on the show uh, Thursday to talk about Finger of God 2, which is releasing. And so I'm excited about that. And then we have other incredible guests on, you know, coming up in the days ahead. And so go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, Michael Lombardo and Awaken Live. You can go there hours, over 80 hours of, you know, different interviews, um, different shows and teachings and things like that. And so you can go and receive from that. Bless you guys. And I look forward to seeing you again on Awaken Live.